right, it's sunrise over the, we're just leaving the town of El Gonzo. It's like a Muppet character. It's really beautiful, huh? the birds are chirping. We had a really nice, enjoyable evening in town. Very small town. They have uh, two bars slash restaurants, really only one restaurant. The other one was just a bar and they had food you could microwave or something. But uh, it's really like a brisk, cold morning. Yesterday was a really nice walk uh, through beautiful fields like this. It was really nice. We sort of decided to stop short of where the book says. Every time we do that, we always have a good experience. This time, it was okay. I mean, the town El Gonzo really hasn't anything to offer. You can't even get in a church. Uh, the one real alberg there is the only Wi-Fi spot in the entire town. And it started by this guy named Aaron, really cool kid. He's like 25 or 26. And he started the alberg when he was 19. And so that was pretty cool. We met uh, three brothers from Mexico, Jorge, Adrian, and Ricardo, I think was the third one. It's either Ricardo or Roberto. But three brothers that are all doing the Camino together. Really nice guys. And, uh, but yeah, it's been an interesting, I guess, last night. Um, the town that we're heading to now is about seven kilometers out. It's a, I don't remember the name of it. If you look on the map, heading west from El Gonzo, it's the next big town. And it's, uh, it's usually the end of the day for most people for, who follow the book, or at least the book that everyone has out here that's absolutely terrible, by the way. Uh, I can't wait to sort of ritualistically burn it and sort of symbolically get rid of it. I would highly recommend not following that book even though we're using it as sort of a, at least judgment of distances. And even those, the distances are not always right. The book might tell you a town is six kilometers, but then you'd find a sign that says it's four. And it's like, well, how did this book get in circulation and how come everybody on this freaking Camino has it? It's a horrible book. So, uh, I can't rant enough about that. Well, it's a beautiful sunrise. Uh, Pretty heavy emotional day yesterday. We met this really cool uh, father-daughter combination that's sort of walking with us now. John and Talia, really nice people. They're from the States as well. And they're from Colorado. So one of our clan, Jessica, uh, apparently lives very close to them, sort of weird. But yeah, we had some interesting talks yesterday. Sort of an emotional uh, day, I guess I would put it. And I don't know. I said I don't want to record anymore, I just want to enjoy this. This is so rare to get really beautiful sunrise, lots of birds, fresh air. It's like the best time to start hiking right now. It's cool. Most people leave before the sunrise and it's really cold, but if you wait till just right around the sunrise, it's like the best time. It's like, you can see the sun coming up over the horizon there. It's pretty nifty. So, um, I'll report back I have some more cool stuff to say I'll talk to you then oh one more thing um, one of the I guess there's an impending feeling that everybody's getting about reaching the big cross uh, there's a huge cross where everybody is carrying stones from their home and this cross uh, is a place where you're basically carrying a stone uh, for you know, as a symbolic gesture of something you're trying to get rid of in your life. A lot like Lent for the, uh, before Easter, how you'll abstain from doing something that might be self-destructive. This cross has been purported to miraculously get rid of problems in your life. So if you're having trouble feeding drugs or maybe alcohol or some kind of behavior that you wish you didn't have, you can carry this to the cross lay it there with a prayer and many people have reported miraculous healings from whatever it was but one of the other side effects is before we get to the cross I'm seeing a large number of these kind of crosses where you'll see them placed along the way a lot of rocks underneath it's almost like 
I don't know, they're becoming a little bit more frequent. Even in the maps, it's showing the crosses. So people are carrying stuff and leaving them there. But just knowing that the real big one is coming, I have a permanent marker that I brought and everybody's asking if they can borrow the permanent marker because they want to mark their rock. I guess they're getting sort of geared up emotionally for this uh, encounter. And it's really interesting to see people many of which I wouldn't even say are religious, suddenly get very serious about this cross. Like it's uh, got a lot more symbolic and deep spiritual meaning than they even want to admit. And I'm actually carrying some crosses for others too. It's common that you'll carry a cross for your, or a rock, I'm sorry, not a cross. And, and people will carry rocks for themselves, but also maybe for loved ones or somebody else who wishes that it'd be laid at the cross. So I have, uh, I have, I've been carrying some rocks for over 300 miles for some other people. So I, uh, I think I'm owed like a nice, I don't know, something nice in return. No, I'm just joking. I would do it for them without any reward. So, but yeah, that's the only other thing. I don't think it's today. I think it might be tomorrow where we hit that cross. But there's a, I don't know, a sense of anticipation about getting there. Now, if, I don't know, the camera will show, but off in the future, and what I mean by the future, in the distance is a mountain that we're due to cross, and there's actually snow on it. I don't know if I can zoom in. Yeah, there it is. And we're due to cross that. And so we've been walking towards it for all this time. And uh, that mountain, which seemed so far away before, slowly getting closer, slowly getting closer. So we're all, we know we're getting close. I think we have roughly 10 days to go uh, to get over the mountain and get into Santiago. So it's crazy how many people are talking about how they wish this won't end. They know that out here it's a separate world. There's something very magical about the relationships that you build on the Camino and how, in a way, you're, you're removed from the day-to-day -day stuff. You're removed from your life in a, in a pretty drastic way. I mean, we stay connected through email or uh, whatever, but out here it's just so different. And we're already having discussions but how emotionally charged it's going to be to finish, to get to Santiago. Uh, a lot of us want to go to Finisterre, which is the 100 kilometers past it, but I'd say the majority are saying they're gonna take a bus since it's actually not part of the pilgrimage and go to what's called Earth's End. It's the place where it used to be thought of as the end of the world before Columbus came across the ocean and realized there's a whole nother continent. So, but uh, custom has it that you, you burn things at Finisterre. You bring out clothes or items and it, a lot like the cross, is a symbolic shedding of the past. Getting rid of old stuff, starting fresh, starting new. And for me, I feel like it's pretty important that I make it there. So, um, I've got some stuff I want to do there that I don't know if I want to share here. So, uh, that's all. I'm going to get back on my hike now. Buen Camino. Alright, I'm, I don't know how many kilometers out of El Gonzo, but I've come across this interesting fence. This fence, uh, it's gone for kilometers now and literally strewn throughout the fence is little crosses. People take twigs and they'll make a crucifix out of it. And I mean, this has been going on. I can't even count how many thousands and thousands of crosses are wedged into this fence. And this is probably, I don't know, maybe the sixth or seventh fence I've seen like this on the Camino where a trail will run parallel to a wire graded fence. And it's like thousands and thousands of crosses I mean, it, I know a lot of people do this pilgrimage, but not everybody stops and puts these in. So I'm sort of, I guess, amazed by how many years this must represent 
of people going by and putting a cross in one of these fences. And I'm not kidding. I, it's tens of thousands of these. And it's just, it's sort of, I don't know, it's sort of moving to think that many pilgrims have walked this trail. And, I mean, we passed a, the remains of a what used to be a pilgrim's hospital. And it was there from 1100. So, I mean, that's almost a thousand years ago. And that was a hospital for pilgrims back then. And you just sort of imagine how many feet have been on this trail, how many people have walked this route, and how we're just one of, God, I don't know, millions? Millions and millions? I mean, it's crazy. It's sort of insane. But I don't know, I just felt I needed to share that. That's pretty cool. Uh, so I'm just passing through a little town called Rabanel del Camino, which is about seven kilometers past El Gonzo. And my very first thought was, damn, we should have stayed here. This has a lot more character to it, a lot more options. El Gonzo only had one real alberg, only one place with Wi-Fi, one place to eat. This place had a number of albergs, uh, a bunch of restaurants. I would recommend skipping El Gonzo, coming to this town. This one uh, would have been much better. My group, we've sort of had a little powwow about the next stop. And I know we've been going off book and stopping at the town just prior to where the book goes, but we're sort of in need of some supplies. Uh, some of the girls need some stuff from the pharmacy. So we're gonna try to get to the end of day, which is like 30, 32 or 33 kilometers. Uh, to the very end, so we've gone about seven. So we've got our work cut out for us. It'll be a long day in the heat, but hopefully we'll get there and have a lot of options. Apparently it's a fairly sizable population, like 800 people, and hopefully we can get all the things we need. Uh, we're talking, we met up with this other uh, father-daughter and they've been walking with us. And this is neat, a little fountain. You want to fill up with water? I'm good on water, so. But um, yeah, so we're gonna try to maybe go to a market, get some food, have a big communal meal, just hang out, talk. Uh, makes the journey go by faster. So, with that said, Buen Camino. All right, after leaving El Gonzo, we made it to the peak, something like 250 meters elevation climb. Beautiful hike, very beautiful. And look what is behind me. Horses, you know, baby, looks like a donkey or a burro. I think I want to come in close. Look at this. Is that cool? Pretty cool up here. So we're at the peak. And this is the little town behind, which I'm going to walk up. There's our crew sitting around. Oh, and this is the backpack transfer guy. So for all the people who are a little too lazy to carry their backpack, you can actually pay him and he'll take it ahead. There's our little Cola gang and our new additions to our little Camino family. Here's the little Alberg at the peak. We've got a little bit more to go up, but then we are heading down. So 32 kilometers today. It's going to be a, a bear. Well, we got to the cross today, and this sort of caught me by surprise. I wasn't expecting to hit this for another day or two, so I guess there's a certain amount of preparation that I was sort of anticipated having time to do and I didn't have so I don't know we've been here for a little while it's been a pretty emotional I don't know it's been pretty hard so but the cola girls just got their rocks up there so or their stones <laughs> <laughs> 